In this video, I will be doing a boss breakdown for Bastion of Twilight, mainly for rogues and red paladins, and I will give you guys some insights on what my thought process is on certain moves, and how to do these bosses in order to get the best part results out of them. Before getting any further, I would like to mention that only 23% of you guys watching these videos are subscribed. If you like my content, consider subscribing as it helps grow my channel and motivates me to continue making more. Now let's get back on the topic. To start with, we have Halfus, this boss takes percentage based damage taken, debuff every time a dragon dies. This means the goal of a raid is that they should kill all 4 dragons in order to get the maximum DPS increase on the boss. Usually during the 4th dragon the boss kinda dies on its own anyways, therefore you wanna make sure that the dragon actually goes down because if it doesn't go down then the damage doesn't count on it and your lugs are ruined. So in reality the way you wanna parse on this boss is that you need to sacrifice some people's DPS. Maybe there's ults in your raid that they don't really care about parsing so just put them on the dragons, put the mains on the boss and once Skull dies it doesn't really matter if the mains don't DPS the dragons anymore, as long as the alts are doing it, it's completely fine. You just need to make sure that once fourth dragon is actually out, you need to kill it before the boss itself. Most pugs or gales don't actually spawn the fourth one on the pole because they're just not confident enough to actually do it because it's actually really hard to manage it. If Skull doesn't die early on onto the fight, it's gonna be a disaster as it's a very healing intensive fight if there is four of them and not only three. But as I said, if you're a combat rogue, you wanna make sure that you actually stand on the kill target while you're blade flurrying onto the boss. So all of that goes to the ad as well. Always target boss as a combat, you don't wanna swap it off at all. But if you're a red paladin, just make that Skull dies first and then go on to the boss. When the boss casts the Rage ability and stuns you 3 times, you can bubble it off as a paladin but as a rogue you can't really do much about it, you just have to sit through it. Just remember to faint before it in case you die because these meteors that hit the ground might actually finish you off. But Rallyon and Valiona, all you want is to not be sent down. If that happens to you, it's pretty much over. This fight is very simple, just don't lose any uptime and make the tank understand that when the drake takes off and goes up, they should already be positioned under the next drake, coming down, to avoid any downtime. Do not forget to redirect any insight you have, so it's not wasted. This fight is pretty much just a tank and spank, and there's nothing to say about it, so I will just move on to the Ascendant Council. The Council fight is actually very fun for rogues, only if your tank understands and they're actually on the same page so they don't constantly go different paths and separate the bosses. But in my opinion the boss should actually just be solo tanked already. I don't think the tank can actually die to these bosses so suggest that to your relatedors. Maybe they change it, maybe they don't. I already do it with solo tanks in the 10 mans but in 25 man it might be a different story. During phase 1, these bosses actually apply a debuff to a player who can spread it amongst other players. It's either ice debuff or fire, so when you have that buff, you wanna be hitting the opposite element of the target. For combat rogue, this is irrelevant, you don't really care what you're hitting, as blade flurry hits the other target anyways, and it applies that debuff damage, so you're fine. But for red paladin, you kinda want to make sure that your seal of truth debuff is on both targets, and at the same time, hit the correct target with the debuff. During phase 2, rogues shouldn't really care about tornadoes or the grounding effects. Same goes for the paladins. When the big ability actually does happen, just press a feint or a shield wall. For the rods, you can just use immunities like cloak and bubble. And if the orb chases you, do not use any type of vanish, bubble or any bullshit like that. Just do the mechanic and deal with it. On phase 3, just make sure that you have your back on the outer walls and don't be in front of the bus as you will parry a lot. So just make sure you're behind it and hit the bus. Chugal is a very simple boss, you just need an understanding tank that takes the boss on top of the elementals every single time, and you shouldn't be forgetting to turn on your blade flurry when that happens. Always try to push in an eviscerate before the elemental hits zero, and once that happens, do not push the add anymore as it doesn't count. Once the boss hits its last phase, I suggest doing the throne method where you take the boss all the way up to the stairs, and once the creations are spawned and stacked, you just fully cleave them down. For rogues and paladins, this is just a standing still boss till it dies. I can't really help you much with any info that I have, so just hit the boss till it dies, really. There is nothing much to be said. Alright, for the last boss of the raid. Sadly, rogues can't pre-ascend in this boss as there is no add before the boss, which is fine. But for the retribution paladins, you can still do the pre pull guardian, which is really nice for this right here. Because I believe for most of the good kills and raids, they actually only spend 45 seconds to push the first phase, so it's perfect timing for you. And even when the boss is actually pushed to 30%, keep hitting it. 
For now, at least, since there is no whelp counting in the DPS meters, why not just keep the boss and push the shield? Even though I don't think if the omelette time is actually based on the boss's shield and it's not percentage based at all, and it just comes in once boss feels like it, I feel like, I don't know really. But for rogue anyways, you don't really go on to the omelette. Paladins do, but for rogues, you just stay on the bus, you wait for the spite caller once it comes in. Depending on who's gonna tank it for you, just trick it to them. Uh, hopefully you can just ask your tanks to actually stack that spite caller with the dragon. I usually like to just keep the orbs onto the left till I actually wanna get out of the melee of the bus, like this here. If you are not the one who's getting the line, just go left first anyways to make sure that the middle line doesn't hit you and then go forward and back to your spot. So as I said, once the shield comes and he's about to do the explosion, just keep hitting it for a little while and then go back onto the shield. If your raid is really struggling with whelps, just help them I guess, but I don't really see any raid actually struggling with these mobs, so you shouldn't worry about them. The moment the shield actually is done, Defending you, just go back onto the bus and hit it. Honestly, someone has to actually correct me on this one. I don't know if this damage counts right now that I'm doing to the bus. I guess it does, but I haven't checked myself actually. A lot of people thought killing spree just takes you behind the bus. I don't know why you just don't check it yourselves. Like, go hit the bus with the killing spree and see what happens, you know? A lot of people are scared of Magmo as well, but I guess he actually was bugged for a while and you would be sent down the lava. A lot of people actually are very scared of the Spite Color casting too early. You don't need to worry a lot about his cast, just keep hitting it with your abilities. Here you can see that Dragon is not even stacking with the Rogue, so it's kind of sad for me because I wanted to actually Blade Flutter there, which I couldn't. But as I said, this mob only casts every 5 to 7 seconds. You don't need to even worry while it's casting. If you're mid GCD, you're gonna get off your GCD and then interrupt it with gouge or blind. Sometimes one idiot might actually charge it or stun it. So just have shift bound just to avoid these occasions. Once the haste is out, I suggest just never using gouge anymore as it's just not a good spender anyways, we only did it just to get our 5 combo point finishers off and now that we have a lot of energy region, there is no point in doing that. So just do one revealing strike and always sinister till the 5 combo points and use your finisher. I just usually like to push in as many finishers as I can before killing spring into a red insight. Sometimes I think I do like 4 to 5 of them, but it really depends on the RNG of the double combo point procs. In this fight, it's really RNG based if you get to do a good parse or not, because these orbs could really fuck with you and just constantly happen to you and no one else. So, there is an RNG element to it. Thankfully, they removed the whelps so people aren't padding anymore. But recently, when I checked the logs of the top rogues, they are still padding. I mean, there is never a ward that's perfect for us. There is always one guy who's gonna get the Ahulundu treatment in the raids and get to cleave on something, which is at the moment the spite caller and the dragon. Like some rogues are getting full cleave uptime on them for 2 plus millions, which is insane to me how they're allowing it, but if the raid is cool with it, why not, you know? Also one thing I'd like to mention that is for the last 2 or 3 weeks I actually can't get off 2 guardians on my paladin. I don't really know if it's a good idea to use it on pool. I mean, obviously a 45 second one is always better than a 30 second one. But I would feel like the value of doing it during the region buff, it might be better. Because it is actually haste as well. Maybe the Guardian hits more than the, you know, pool one. But you guys need to check out that yourselves in the logs and just see for yourselves. But anyways, I hope this video was helpful for some of you, sorry that it was very late into the phase. I'm sure there's still many weeks to come till Firelands is actually released, so you can execute this stuff that I told you, and maybe get some pink parses or even yellows, who knows.
this raid is kind of a simple raid, so there wasn't much to really say. Blackwing Descent is a big step up against this one, so I will cover it next. As always, if you guys like my content and would like to support me, please consider subscribing and liking this video as it helps me grow my channel. And that's it for this video, I will see you guys in the next one.